It's bourbonblog.com live. Hey, it's one of my favorite people as well. It's Jordan Vine, Master Stiller, Savage and Cook, joining us live from Mayor Island, California. We're going to talk about a lot of new things they're doing. What's what's happening, Jordan? How, how is it going there, Mayor Island? Oh, hell, man. Everything's happening out here. Uh, California is having a great year. Uh, we finally, you know, got enough rain that, that we're not going to we're not going to all go thirsty this year. We've got great snow up in the mountains. Um, it's beautiful outside. It's sizing up to be a beautiful spring. And uh, yeah, it's California. It's, it's never that bad. Um, most exciting stuff out here at the distillery, though, uh, if, you know, for those of you who have been following along at home, we are uh, we are in our fifth year. Um, you know, letting 2020 be forgotten a little bit because uh, we've <laughs> lost a whole lot of whiskey production to to hand sanitizer for that year. But I'm still I'm still just getting over that PTSD. Um, but uh, yeah, we've uh, our whiskey was ready. I mean, we started we started sampling out of barrels uh, the bourbon at year four, the rye at year three, um, and everything tasted beautiful. And we made the we made the decision to just take a hard pivot, stop bottling contract stuff you know up until now it's been coming out of indiana tennessee from the usual suspects um and we just uh we changed up the package let's Uh, see it yeah went to went to the tall bottle got rid of the uh um you know the the big graphics that have uh, kind of occupied the the main real estate on the bottle up till now we went to a much simpler format uh, you can read it right there. Though we love the old graphics, and if you can still find that on the shelf, it's wonderful juice. But this is this is 100% your own, and all from within 50 miles of the distillery. Correct, sir. Correct, yes. So all the grains are grown 50 miles away in Sacramento Valley in a little town called Winters uh, by one family, the Rominger Farms. Uh, those uh, grains are uh, collected by another family-owned company called Adams Grain around here, a smaller uh, grain elevator and, and sorting plant. They clean everything. Everything shows up here, uh, you know, directly from their trucks. Uh, so we have to control that process from from the field uh, right to right to the uh, cooker. And um, the barley is also grown there. The rye is grown during the winter months. Uh, we use a, a, a hard red, uh, very very hearty rye that grows through the winter months. Uh, the corn, the barley grown during the summer months. The barley is sent to a, a maltster in Alameda, and he uh, and called Admiral Malting, um, and they do traditional old school floor malting, and make this high diastatic power distiller's malt for us. It only takes four percent of that to convert uh, the whole ten thousand pound uh, batch uh, uh, mash bill. It's a two to one grist ratio, five thousand gallons uh, foundation liquid to ten thousand pounds of of grain, <clears throat> and that four percent converts everything very efficiently. Uh, gets us a, a good high yield of about 10 to 11 percent ABV, and um, after fermentation, distillation, right here on on site, it's a five day fermentation. Uh, you know, continuous distillation running through a, a, a column and then a doubler assembly. And once that's done, uh, we don't touch it with anything but uh, spring water that comes out of Geyserville. Uh, wow. We truck down here at, at great peril to ourselves. It's a, it's a very. It did, how long does it take to get it from Geyserville? Not too far away, but how long does that take? Uh, you know, it's <laughs> it's about two and a half hours away to get to the spring, and then you wow. fill up a thousand gallons of water on a truck, and you bring it back down. It's a lot of weight, uh, and it's not a very well developed road, so uh, not the easiest thing to do. But that spring water is perfect. It's it's calcium magnesium oh my god it's gonna throw some people back to my breckenridge days when they talked about water wage <laughs> the water well, <laughs> water matters i mean this is something you've always cared about from breckenridge the the snow melt mountain water this water from northern sonoma county right uh correct yep and this yep. is uh, making some of the finest we love napa as well but again you picked this water making some of the finest wines in the world why what about this water Absolutely. I mean, it's it's really about the mineral content. Uh, you know, it comes from two natural springs that are um, uh, derived from uh, a few hundred feet down and the side of uh, this mountain in, in the aptly named Geyserville. Uh, the, you know, granite uh, deposits that are in the soil that it settles in, you know, it's very much like, you know, what you get in Spencer County out in Kentucky with the... Right. 
with that water. So you get high calcium carbonate numbers, uh, magnesium numbers, manganese and trace amounts, um, you know, low metals, there's no iron, there's no, uh, you know, obviously arsenic, things like this. Um, so honestly, it's, it's just beautiful, pristine, heavy water at about 7.9 pH, um, which would not make ideal for fermentation kinetics, but uh, it is really nice for a final blending water. We don't bother with it for fermentation because, well, you, you distill you distill your fermented wash and you end up with distilled water. There's no. So place. this is the water you're using for the blending for the proofing. Correct. Yeah. All the cut water from, uh, you know, we collect off the still off the doubler at about 135 to 140 proof. I like it more to 135, but you know, things, things vary through the day. Um, and we do that. We hold it a little bit higher than a lot of places. A lot of places bring it off at 125, 130. I'm not trying to make uh, boring whiskey or something without, uh, you know, enough congeneric influence to, to have an interesting flavor profile. Uh, but I like it just a little bit cleaner at that. Let the wood express itself a little bit more. So um, from that proof, the still proof to 120 proof, which is what we barrel at, that happens with the spring water only. Goes in a barrel, ages three to four years, uh, three years for the rye, four years for the bourbon. And uh, then when we pull it from barrel, been seeing a real stable. I was very surprised by this. I mean, in these conditions, you know, here between the Napa River and San Pablo Bay, humidity stays pretty stable up in the, uh, you know, 70s. Um, right. Barely dips uh, below uh, 65. And consequently, we've gotten pretty even alcohol and water evaporation uh, as far as our angel share evaporative loss here on the islands. So, uh, Putting it in at 120, we've been pulling it out at about 122, 123. Little bit of uh, uh, water evaporation increase in, in concentration, but not enough that it, it really matters at the end of the day when we have to dilute it back again with that spring water. You know, there's nothing worse than when you put it in at 120 and you pull it out at 138, 140. Sorry, bookers, I, I love you. <laughs> That's why they don't dilute that stuff because you'd have to put so much water in it that, you know, it would. That's well, this is yeah, and and what we're taste, we're going to taste this here in a moment. Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it now because we have a couple surprises for them as far as what's to come. But on the shelf now, we mentioned everything you're seeing on the shelf again uh, the rye, the bourbon, the American whiskey. Um, it's all yours, it's all yours. You're putting it in wine barrels. Show us again that bottle that's in front of you, yeah. That one, if you would, please. Thank you, Jordy's modeling the bourbon, the cask finish, Cabernet cask finish uh bourbon and then of course you have the grenache barrels finishing the rye uh exactly. all just so beautiful and if you haven't tried savage and hook for a while uh or if you've never tried it try it now it's what you all have evolved into is so beautiful but this is some of the last or it is the last uh <laughs> of of your contract whiskey right or the whiskey you uh, you know it's a year old Last of what i have in the cell in the Rick House, I'm, I'm not going to say I don't have some random barrels laying around that were made by other people because uh, that was, you know, that was what we've been doing for the last four years, keeping the lights up on by uh, bottling other people's whiskey aged in our conditions and with our own uh, little finishing techniques and whatnot. And thank you for bringing that up because you know me, man, I, I, I'm all over the place. Little little unmedicated ADD going on over here, but uh, <laughs> I... Uh, we still do the same process that we did with the legacy bottles, uh, finishing the bourbon and Cabernet Sauvignon casks. And again, it's not, we're not making wine, uh, flavored whiskeys here. It's, uh, 17% of it goes into Cabernet Sauvignon casks. Just a little nod to, to wine country, to Dave Finney's background, who was the founder here. Um, seven, about 17% for this one or for most all of them? Uh, 17% for the, for the, our, our house bourbon whiskey. Um, 25% for our rye goes into Grenache barrels. And again, I know I'm, I'm all over the place. Uh, That's all right. The only other thing we changed when we went to, to this format and, and more to the point to 100% made in-house whiskey, uh, we brought the proof up to 100 proof. It used to be at 88 for the bourbon. We brought the proof up on, on, the, on the core line. And again, the legacy bottles are the ones with the images on them. We could, we, could we call this a legacy bottle too? Or is this... Um, you know, this... I mean, we've been... We've been program for uh you've done well for years now 
Yeah. The last three years, we've got, you know, all of them back here. This is rye. Yeah, the cognac finished rye, which we loved. And this Another one, now, again, this is a 15-year-old American. What what makes this American? You say American whiskey. What's this? What is this? Well, uh, you know, it 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 aged up in, in second-use bourbon casks. So mm. it doesn't qualify uh, as, as a bourbon. I, you know, the, the the classification is whiskey, and then, you know, you've got your types, bourbon, rye, blah, blah, blah. Right. But, uh, they all require uh, aging in 100% uh, new, unused oak containers. Yeah. With this one, we it went into a second-use bourbon cask, much more like a Canadian or Scotch or Irish whiskey would. Age we can't say a ton about it, but we know it came from Tennessee. It did come from Tennessee, yes. Does that mean it's a Tennessee whiskey or not exactly? Do we know? It's not a Tennessee whiskey in the sense that uh, uh, you know it didn't it didn't go through the Lincoln County process, right? Charcoal mellowed or or however we're calling that. Uh, now I think charcoal mellowed still the Lincoln County process, um, and uh, so it didn't go through that. So it's you know it would have been a bourbon if it had gone into new right. coop didn't so it just qualifies for whiskey and then whiskey looks lonely on the label so we put yeah. america well let's show them this i want to show them this because this is uh this is the the wine uh that's the that's the bottle of the wine that's the uh, our lady of guadalupe right correct so this is dave finney's uh uh really his first domestic estate vineyard um it's over in santa rita hills uh which is uh you know, south of us pretty uh, new release right Oh yeah, the first first vintage went out uh, well last year. So last year. yeah, so beautiful Pinot uh, P Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Uh, I think there's four very particular clones that he selected for the no. site. Uh, him and his vineyard manager, they grow beautifully there. Um, and you know, it's kind of a departure for Dave. He's most of his wines have been Zinfandel or Cabernet Sauvignon based uh, most of the time. Although he's done everything uh, at, at one point or another. But and you picked that one. Why? I mean, this is again beautiful, fifteen-year-old. I'm sure before it went into the wine barrel was just incredible. But drinking this now, the depth, the earth, the sweetness. Why did you pick that wine barrel to do this one? Well, I mean, as soon as he, uh, you know, actually the uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe uh, Pinot Noir, um, I knew I had to snatch those barrels before. You snatched them up. You, you, you know, you know a guy. I knew again. So I got them. Uh, this just seemed to make the most sense. I did look at aging some rye in them, um, which I have done. I've got that aging up too. You might see that in the future. That will be our in-house made rye. Uh, but I still had this beautiful, um, at the time, 14-year Tennessee whiskey. Um, and it just seemed oh, perfect good. for... Uh, uh, for those Pinot Noir barrels, that that beautiful, beautiful kind of blueberry floral Pinot Noir, so hard to some, yeah. You get some of those notes on this, everything from fruit floral to the mushroom. Yeah, there's a, there's it's a, a beautiful. I not even proof mine down just a touch. I mean, I like the uh, 117 proof, but just proofing it a touch down, you're getting, you're just getting such a combination. Oh, look at that. Breathe. You got the job. Breathe. Breathe into that whiskey. Is this the last? Where there'll be more Gueros? I mean, under this label, will you will you have more Gueros in the future, or will you? Um, there will always probably be some 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 out there. Um, like in a, a bottle, I mean. Still got some other stuff aging around, um, and I'm not afraid of putting our own stuff in into the too, uh, as we get older and older, because stuff is going to age out of my primary program. You know, hopefully, right. you make, make a little bit more than you sell. Uh, because then you don't ever run out, right? But as bourbon gets to be five, six years old, I don't want it in our core brand because uh, I don't want to adjust people's palates to expect that older whiskey profile in there. So that you're, so you're so talented. I mean, everything you've done here, everything you've ever done, I'd love. But I really love this square. I love the new bourbons. And if you, you have that right beside you, that bottle and bond, show them the mock-up bottle of what's, here's oh, what's yeah. to come. Tell us what's to come mock-up and it's a it's a poorly rendered mock-up a little bit but this is essentially what the bottle will be and this will be out uh here just in a few weeks actually That's in a few weeks it's the bottle and bond um bloody butcher 
Yeah. So we uh, we grew some, you know, uh, Rominger Farms. I was talking about them earlier. Who grows all of our corn and rye and barley? Um, we uh, decided a few years ago that we wanted to extend it, extend the brand. I had never made a weeded bourbon before. I've always been a, a rye guy, um, and so. Uh, we decided to do an heirloom variety called Bloody Butcher, which is red corn. Very low yielding, you know, uh, hard to grow out here. It's prone to viral infections and, you know, too much rain. And it, 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 heirloom varieties don't don't like conditions that aren't ideal. You know, you need dry Midwest conditions for most of that stuff. Um, right. But... Uh, we were able to grow a good crop of Bloody Butcher out here. Uh, we took our uh, red winter wheat, again, that's grown same time as our rye is grown. Uh, so it's a 70% uh, Bloody Butcher corn, uh, 26% uh, red winter wheat, a hard winter wheat, and 4% of the same malted barley. Uh, and so... Wow. The same malted barley that you use in... In all of our our core brand, all of our health. So you really you're mixing up the uh, the bloody butcher. You're you're putting the bloody butcher in there, and and that's finished in in one cask as well, or no? Correct. Everything still goes into the same Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a four year old, and then Cabernet for a few months. Uh yes. Well, no, actually, this one no. did not see the, the the Cabernet finish. We it felt like gilding the lily a little. So uh, it's uh, four years in char number three, new American oak. Um, you know, heavy toasted before it's, it's char, uh, it's about a 45 minute toast, about a, a minute and 20 second char to get to a char number three and over a you know, smudge pots and open fire. It's not, you know, radiant toasted or anything like that. Nothing wrong with that. But it's, it's a very small cooperage. It does things by hand. Um, aged four years. It is the product. Uh, the first release will be the product of a, uh, uh I was, telling you this before we got on here it's so funny the ttb you know they it has to be a product of one season but the um ttb only recognizes two seasons apparently spring and fall uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is a fall release it's from a fall release six months of the year and um will that be an annual release it will it will uh we will uh Maybe. I've, I've made we've made this every year since we decided to start doing it, which our first one was four years ago. Um, and so I've got plenty to go. We did do a second one that did not yield as well. It's called uh, Howlin' Mob. It's another Howlin Mob. variety. It's a very early ripening corn. Um, ergo the name, like, you know, people were starving by the time it got harvested. And so the Howling Mob would come out demanding their grain. Where's my corn? Exactly. Where's my corn? Now, where's my bourbon? And this is a bourbon. The Howland Mob is a bourbon too. The Howland Mob is a bourbon and bottled and bond. But bourbon. it's more going to be more limited. Uh, there's only thirty. I only ever made thirty-one barrels of it, and that'll oh, be wow. the only release that'll ever happen to that one. So this is a one-off. It is. So this both coming out the next month or so. They will. They'll be coming out uh, uh, definitely within the next month or two. We're bottling, uh, and you know, depending on where you're at in the country, it'll right. take a little bit to get, but. Alan Mob a little more limited, uh, and then we'll be seeing some of the um, Bloody Butcher. The Bloody Butcher. Yes, that's uh, that's one I'm very proud. I made made another. I made about 250 to 300 barrels every year for the last. Four oh years. wow! So this is really going to be price points on those each. Do we know what they are? Oh, gosh, I don't even want to guess. That's. <laughs> it's all right. We'll let them know. Whatever we will they, let them know. Thinks they can get. It. Well, let them know. We're hey, thanks for letting us be first to talk about it, and we tasted it recently, and we love it. Uh, we really appreciate it, Jordan. And uh, again, if you're a fan of what Jordan does, Savage and Cook, find this Guero, but also this one's limited. This is so good at 15 years old. Find everything they do, their core line, and um, go see them too. I, I always, uh, I love visiting these guys. I'm going to visit them later this year too. Yeah, we please, always have a good time. With come them. by. We are we are here on this beautiful little island in the East Bay, of the San Francisco Bay Area. It's almost always gorgeous. Um, you know, you got the Napa River on one side, San Pablo Bay on the other. There's a ferry that brings you right to our doorstep from San Francisco from the ferry building. Um, Incredible. So I know California does have its problems sometimes, but um, it but is this is not one of them. This is never one of them, being with you. A whiskey is not usually one of them. 
and neither is Jordan usually. <laughs> hey, I, and I like the Negroni shirt too, man. Great Negroni oh, shirt. Yeah, this is from like a Tales of the Cocktail. From I know. I was about to say, I think I remember that one. <laughs> Jordan, always a pleasure. Thanks for letting us taste your finest, and uh, we'll see you soon, my friend. It is always great drinking with you. Thank you for always uh, uh, making me part of your part of your show, man. And I really do appreciate you. And uh, just thanks again. It's good to You're see welcome. you. Cheers, man.